and I also tried to make a Chinese landscape painting here. So hi there again everyone, this is again Alan and welcome back to my watercolor channel. Happy New Year everyone, how are you guys doing? You know me, I've been really very busy for work these past few months, I've been traveling a lot so I know you're missing already my watercolor reviews. So for today's video, we are going to be having a watercolor review. We are going to be reviewing the Good Sai watercolor paints. These paints are from the makers of Paul Rubens and so I'm very excited. So again, let's go. In 2022, I received an email from an agent of Paul Rubens. His name was Siko, and he was asking me if I am interested to reviewing their new line, which is the Good Side Watercolor Paints, because he saw my Paul Rubens floral set review and he was happy about it. And uh, so I said yes. So eventually, he sent me this watercolor set. So thank you. And uh, he wants me to review this watercolor set and I told him yes, I'm very willing to review it but I need to be honest. <laughs> and um, so here it is already. And he also sent me a link, an Amazon US link for this particular product. It's 46.99 US dollars or roughly 2,500 Philippine pesos. This is 24 color set, um, 12 ml each so I think that's pretty decent. For, for the amount of paints that we are having but of course we also have to consider the quality of the paints so now let's check out the box it has a box cover so this has a very uh, sophisticated artwork in the cover it's very oriental and says here classical artist it has here good side that's I think the line name we have here the logo it says here again classical art great unique culture here and also great unique culture art identity and at the back we have here some QR codes it says here www.paulrubensart.com and here we have again some number codes and it says here good side Chinese painting pigments so let's remove the outer covering and here now is the box proper it looks so nice it's matte black and uh, it doesn't look like a watercolor uh, box because it's just black. And again, here we have a great unique culture art identity, good side Chinese painting pigments. So what you're hearing now is the plane <laughs> passing by. Again, good side, the logo, just the same information in front. But here we have some quotable quotes. I've been impressed with the urgency of doing knowing is not enough we must apply being willing is not enough we must do but it doesn't say whose line is this is who could say a person i don't know so the back part has nothing to show so now let's reveal the tubes oh it's not yet so we have here an information sheet but it's not in English but you may also want to uh, use the Google Translate app so you could uh, you know translate some of the texts so this means ancient color so that and you can also translate other information here so just install Google Translate and you may use it and it will instantly translate all the Chinese characters or other languages that you want to translate. So we have here a foam um, sheet and now here are the tubes. So it's upside down and here they are. They look so gorgeous, they look so beautiful. And they're placed in this foam tray and they're very secure in this setting. This is much better setting as compared to the Paul Rubens floral set. I prefer this. It reminds me so much of the pastels um, box of Sennelier. Wait, let me show you. 
So here it is the Senelia Castells um, box. It also has foam cover and here are the pastas so similar <laughs> similar designs for the containers of the tubes so now let's check out an individual tube the tubes are made out of aluminum painted in black and the cover or the cap is plastic in front we have here a chinese character i think this is the color name so let's use the translate app yes it says here purple so that means purple the character above yep purple and then we have here the name good side the logo classical art again chinese painting pigments 12 ml and on this side we have again some chinese characters so let's use the translate app so it's the binder animal glue light fastness rating 4 capacity 2 ml is that really 2 ml let's double check oh 12 ml so we have here the light fastness, the ML, and the binder, which is animal glue. And on this side, we have the Shanghai Owen Art. So that's the uh, manufacturer, Shanghai Owen Art Materials, same makers of Paul Rubin and uh, the pretty excellent Emil Yang watercolors. And here the barcode, we also have it here. We don't have the pigment information, the transparency rating, granulation rating. We only have the light fastness rating, but I do not know the basis of the rating. But yeah, that's the information we have so far. In the Amazon website, they've provided their a color chart with the uh, English names. But as I was translating each color name in these tubes, I didn't find exact matches for all of the colors. And so in my swatch sheet that I'm going to be uh, coloring later, I uh, used the translation that I generated from my Google Translate app. I hope those are accurate. And if there are corrections, please don't hesitate to comment it in the comment box. And also reading the description of this product, at the Amazon website they also stated there that these paints are more opaque so these are not traditional Western watercolors we're not gonna be expecting them to be very translucent at least they're honest at least they have uh, told us already that these are more on the opaque side so before we do our swatches let's compare our 12 ml good size watercolor paints against the other tube sizes for other brands that we have Let's begin with the 18 ml from Old Holland. We also have here 15 ml from M Gram. Then we also have a 14 ml from Windsor and Newton. So there. We also have 12 ml from My Mary Blue. So this is the same capacity, both 12 ml. Can you compare? And also we have 10 ml from Van Gogh, another 10 ml from Senelier, and lastly we have 5 ml from Core. And now for our swatches and sample painting, of course I'm using as always Arches 185 cold press cotton paper. And for my brushes, I have here my Nevskaya Palitra Kolinsky Sable Round Brush size 3 and my Da Vinci Maestro Kolinsky Brush size 6 for the flat brush. So as you can see, I've already dotted down our paints to make it easier. But let me remind you that some paints are more fluid than the other. Some are kind of bloated and they overflow so be ready with your half pans in case they overflow again let me remind you that the color names are based on uh, the translation made by the google translate app if you find that these translations are not correct please correct it at the comment box so let's begin first color is titanium white so it's appearing to be opaque and again they've also reminded us through their amazon post that these paints are on the opaque side next is this yellow called garcinia and it's very vibrant it's also semi-opaque yeah this is super vibrant 
Next is Real Gar. This is wow, super opaque. And by the way, this color almost got dried in tube. That's the only color in this set that is in that situation. But it's very rich as well. It's a warm earthy yellow. Next is Zubiao. As per the translation, Zubiao or Cinnabar. I believe uh, Zubiao is a proper name. But according to a small research that I did, Zubiao Red is a Chinese color. So I guess this is right. And this is a warm red. Next we have here Cinnabar, also opaque. This is like a pastel warm red or a dark peach. Next is red. And this is I think a mid-red, very vibrant also. Next color is Eosin, also on the opaque side. But it's super vibrant, I must say. Next we have here Deep Red or Crimson. And this is slightly a cooler version of red in this set. And this is a cool red. You'll see it's pink tint in washes. Next we have here Rouge. This is a very deep red, almost like maroon. And these reds are becoming more transparent as they dry, I must say. Next we have purple. I must say this is really very pigmented. And although they did not provide the pigment codes, I have a feeling that these are pigment based because of the differences in each color texture. I like this purple. I think so far this is the most transparent among all the colors that we've swatched. Next we have this Buddhist youth according to the Google Translate but I think this is ultramarine and this is very transparent. I am not seeing granulation yet but maybe when we add more water and when it dries we'll see it. It's a very vibrant ultramarine. Next is blue head. I'm not sure if this is the best translation for this particular color. Is it royal blue? Or, I don't know, major blue, main blue, I don't know, but it keeps on translating blue head. It looks like cobalt blue, and it's not very strong. Or do I need to add more? I think I need to add more. I think we have enough pigments now. Really reminds me of cobalt blue. Now we have here porcelain blue, and this is very opaque. And you know, although I know these are opaque paints, I'm still trying to, you know, show its transparency at the lower part of each swatch because, you know, I'm a watercolor artist and I'm trying to use this as watercolor. Next is Sankin. I'm not sure if, again, this is properly translated. I know Sankin is also a proper name, a name of a place, a person or a I think a mountain. In lighter washes, it can become a tiny bit more transparent. But so far, these two are the most opaque. Now we have Thalo Cyanine Blue. I'm glad it's translated this way. It's very scientific. Uh, this is just very deep and concentrated. Let's see in light washes. Yeah, it's more like Prussian Blue to me. Now we have cyanine. This is just so deep, like black. I think this is Taylor Blue Red Shade and this is yeah, sort of um, Prussian. Next is Emerald Green or Taylor Green. This is Yellow Shade, I think. Is it? <laughs> Wait, let's see. I think it's between um, Yellow Shade and Blue Shade. Next is green head. It has similar translation to the blue head. Not sure if, if this means green, main green royal or I don't know. If you can read that, please help me. But this is a nice pastel green color. Next we have here green, another pastel green. But this one's more on the yellow side as compared to the green head. Next is tone yellow. This is more like a yellow ochre to me. Now we have here ochre. You know what I've noticed in Chinese brands? The ochre is like the burnt sienna. They're kind of 
redder or more on the orange side rather than on the yellow side then we have here burnt tea yeah that's how it was translated by the app it says burnt tea and this is transparent or i think i need to add more i know in some of the swatches i need to add more paints to see the full strength in mass tone like for example in the purple we're gonna go back to that later but now at least you can see the more transparent side of these paints next we have here black and lastly we have gold i don't usually see gold in sets of 24 this is obviously a special set because it has gold and you know uh, gold color is very common in oriental art so but i love this version of gold now let's go back to the colors that i believe need more pigments like the purple And now while we are waiting for our swatches to dry, let's now proceed to our sample painting. And the colors that I've chosen are the Garcinia, the Red, the Thalo Cyanine Blue, the Burnt Tea, and the Emerald Green. I've only selected five colors. And let's begin. Now our sample painting and swatches are finally dry, we can now have a closer look. So now let me give you my honest opinion and review about these paints. But first I have a question, are these paints professional grade paints? They did not mention if it's professional grade paints, they just said it's classical art, Chinese painting pigments. I know these paints are meant for traditional Chinese paintings. These are non-traditional Western paints. But going back to the question, are these paints professional grade paints? I cannot say because they did not provide some of the technical information that I need to say that these are professional grade paints. Can you use this for professional use or for paintings that can be displayed or for paintings that can be sold? It's actually up to you. You can, of course, why not? But for you to be more confident, I suggest you to do your own light fastness test if you want to use this professionally. Now for the color selection for a 24 color set, this can actually work. But if I need to be perfectionist, I think there's too much red for this. There are, I think, five reds here. These two can be orange, but they can fall to red also. I think three or two can be enough. These two oranges or reds look very similar. I can uh, remove this one, this cinnabar, in place of a true warm yellow because this is very earthy. And also I can uh, remove one of these reds, maybe the eosin, in place of a cooler yellow to make the primaries more balanced. Also the blues, they're quite a lot. I think I can remove the sunking or maybe one of these two but i love these two shades 
I don't know, there's just too much reds and blues here. But if there are at least two yellows, I won't complain. For the vibrancy and saturation of the colors, I have no complaint. And I have to note some of the colors have really interesting texture, especially the Thalo Cyanine Blue. I'm not sure if it's visible, but it has this special texture. I'm not sure if it's granulation. And that is the same with the cyanine, very fine granulation, and also the rouge. I hope the camera can capture the texture that I'm talking about. For some reason, the ultramarine doesn't have very strong granulation. I think it has a fine granulation, but it's almost not noticeable, but that's fine. Now for the transparency of these paints, obviously they're not transparent, they're more on the opaque side to the point that they're almost like gouache. I think they're in between watercolor paints and gouache. And I appreciate that they admitted that these paints are opaque in their product description in Amazon US. And since these paints are mostly opaque, I do not advise you to mix more than two colors or if you can just mix um, two to a maximum that's fine or if you can use them directly without mixing each other that's better because it's you know it's very prone to getting muddy colors because they are very opaque now let's check if the paints are adhering very well on paper and to check that let's use a uh, sheet of napkin we're gonna be rubbing it against our swatches and sample painting and if we get traces in our paper then these paints are not adhering perfectly on paper so let's go but I'm actually expecting it to uh, smudge because I, I just um, see that a lot in the paints like this in the big paints so yes we have some traces here now if you're gonna ask me would I recommend these watercolor paints my answer is yes but it depends if you are a beginner if you are trying to learn the basics of watercolors I would suggest you to get a more traditional watercolor for you to be able to learn to practice it the traditional way and also I suggest you to get a smaller set just 12 colors that's enough um, for as long as it has the warm and cool of primaries and you're good to go but if you are not a beginner if you are exploring the medium of watercolor and if you want to try something new this is definitely worth a try they're not bad the quality is really high because the pigment load is really high and the saturation and vibrancy is good if you are planning to use these paints professionally if you're gonna be hanging your paintings or gonna sell the paintings you make from these I suggest you to do your own light fastness test first yes they provided light fastness rating in each color but we're not sure if this is credible because they did not provide the basis of these ratings but I'm sure you're gonna be enjoying these paints they have character and they're very vibrant so I'm sure you're gonna make great output using these paints no doubt and now we have come to our favorite part which is the comparison portion but since these are not the traditional paints that we know we are not gonna be very critical in the comparison I'm not gonna be anymore telling which one is better which one is less <laughs> performing but it's up to you to judge visually so let's begin with the best buy watercolors the Dong A Creative the Symbolion watercolors the Faber Castell solid watercolors the Sterling Arts watercolors, beads, we also have Jojoni watercolor cakes, then we have Sakura Koi pocket filled sketchbox, the Magiwa Basics watercolors, then we have Montmart two seasons, Art Ranger watercolors, the Berkeley watercolors, then we have Pentel watercolor spine, we have the Prang 2007 and the 2019. Then we also have the Mary's watercolors. Then we also have the Mary's in tubes, the Faber Castell in tubes, the Pepeo Studio watercolors, the Lefranc and Bourgeois watercolor paints, the Koinur and the Linke Brilliant watercolors. These are the dye based paints. Then we have the Pretty Excellent watercolors from the same makers, the Owen watercolors also from the same makers. And we have the Owen watercolor cakes, yes, same makers as well. The Kuratake Gansai Tambi. Then we have the Simi Art Semi Dry watercolors. 
the Superior Watercolors, the Simi Art Arts Arch Watercolors, the Simi Art Solid Watercolors uh, 50s Pan, and then the, this is the Pan Palette Watercolors. Then we have the Superior Foldable Palette, and then we have the Mia Himi Solid Watercolors. Then we have the Pelican Transparent Watercolors, the Windsor and Newton China version, the Grumbacker Academy, the Windsor and Newton Cutman, the Sonnet Watercolors, the Van Gogh Watercolor Paints, then we have the Kukuyo Kamlin Watercolors, the Prima Marketing Tropicals, the Espanoleto Aquarela, the Wichitron Watercolors by Silpa Horn, the Lucas Aquarel 1862, then the Mungio Professional Watercolors, the Paul Rubens Floral Set, and as you can see, they have very comparable saturation, but still a slight edge for the Paul Rubens. Then we have the Paul Rubens Half Pants, they are very comparable, but of course, the watercolors are more transparent. We check artist watercolor paints. The blocks watercolors extra fine, the core watercolors, the Rembrandt luxury pocket box set, the Mijello pure pigment set, the White Knights watercolors in tubes, now. the Windsor Newton Professional, the Egal Honey watercolors, the Holbein watercolors, the Schminka Horadam, but yeah. My Schmink Horadam got attacked by ants, sadly. The Daniel Smith Sticks and the Daniel Smith Ultimate Mixing Set. But that's not the ultimate comparison because I have here some interesting sets. We have the Viarco Art Craft Taylor Shape. I think we can also compare it because these are also special type of paints. They're opaque and they're very comparable. As you can see and also we have here the Miyahimi gouache and the Kusai has cleaner output I think and lastly the Canon Dash gouache paints and yeah of course these as gouache paints they're more opaque so again if you are gonna ask me would I recommend these paints my answer is again yes it depends if you are a beginner I would suggest you to you know get more traditional paints a smaller set as long as it has the three uh, primaries with a warm and cool shades you're good to go it's better to learn in uh, using more traditional paints transparent paints before you explore other types of watercolor paints but if you are you know not a beginner if you are exploring different types of mediums and paints of course these are very interesting paints they're not bad they're really good for their type and they're very unique i like the fact that i admitted that they're not transparent paints they're more on the big side because they are traditional chinese paints so they're very specific to that and i also tried to make a Chinese landscape painting here and also I'm able to make transparent shades here transparent washes despite the fact that these paints are more on the opaque side so that's a good sign I believe and for me I think I can put these paints as paints in between gouache and watercolor so it's kind of flexible I think so that is my honest review and reaction to the good side Chinese painting pigments. To Siko of Paul Rubens again, thank you so much for kindly sending these beautiful paints to me. I really appreciate it. And to my co-artists here in the Philippines who would like to try these paints out, I'll be making some hand poured sets of these paints and make them available at my Shopee store. So if you're interested, please do check it out. I'll be putting the link at the description box. Again, thank you so so much everyone for watching if you're not subscribed yet please do subscribe please don't forget to like and share this video to show support to my channel and also please don't forget to watch also if you haven't my travel series my 2022 travel series where I went to Bangkok India and Singapore again thank you for watching and see you on the next video bye bye